Thank you so much, Julian. It's a real pleasure to be back. Uh, I certainly am very excited of where we are today. Uh, Dynacert is a company that has been around for 20 years. We're not a new company by any means. It is, we've spent the last 20 years perfecting our product. We are a global solution to reduce pollution. A little bit of highlights of the company. I mean, Dynacert, we are a carbon emission reduction technology. Uh, we have international growth. Uh, we're very diversified within the trucking, mining, oil and gas. Uh, we are in multiple verticals. Uh, the proprietary know-how and patents, we now have over 20, we have 27 patents with our technology. Uh, the carbon credit measurement, this is something that uh, we talk about the potential reoccurring revenue. We're going to talk a little bit more about this very shortly. Uh, certainly the high barriers to entry. We dominate uh, competitor advantage. We've been around a long time. The company is now uh, becoming a very well-known brand globally. We have very compelling value propositions to the end users with less than one year payback for our technologies with very strong margins for the company with a strong business plan. Our technology, the hydrogen technology, this is, like I said, this is patented technology. Uh, Dinosaur has developed and commercialized patented proprietary electrolyzers called the hydrogen. What we do is we produce measured amounts of hydrogen and oxygen from distilled water. We deliver it pure hydrogen and pure oxygen to the air intake of an internal combustion engine to enhance the burn. It's important to understand we are not a fuel, we are a catalyst. You go back over 50 years, there's white papers where it has been proven time and time and time again that with the introduction of trace amounts of hydrogen that it improves the combustion of an internal combustion engine. Uh, the results are with uh, resulting with more power, better torque, improved fuel consumption, uh, less fuel consumption, and of course, the less CO, CO, uh, CO2 and NOx. We are an on-demand, this is important to understand, our unit is, it produces measured amounts of hydrogen and oxygen on demand, feeds it to the internal combustion engine to enhance the burn. We take very little power from the engine's battery to do this. It was very interesting, a couple of years ago, we had the US Department of Energy analyze our technology. They came back and they said, you've got the holy grail. You have figured out a way to produce more hydrogen with less power than anything we've ever seen. Uh, this is designed in such a way, this is a fully computerized unit. This is a dock to, to a truck, to mining equipment, to generators, reefers, and construction equipment, where you have this unit on your vehicle, which is producing these measured amounts of gases Sees it through the air intake to enhance the burn. The results, particulate matter, we reduce the particulate matter very significantly, or the black smoke, the diesel exhaust fluid, and the diesel particulate filters. It's important to understand. Again, you know, we do this right at the source, right at the combustion. We are not a filtration system. Our technology enhances the burn. It gives a vehicle or gives the engine the ability to get a complete burn out of its fuel, therefore increasing the power, increasing the torque, but more importantly, reducing the emissions right at the source. Uh, you know, I look at today, you know, in the trucking industry, you know, with the DEF systems, the, especially the DPF systems, that it certainly makes us all feel good. You look at a truck going down the road, you don't see the black smoke coming out of the tailpipe. The reality is, you know, with the DPF systems, everything that are on vehicles today, it gathers this particulate matter, and then the vehicles go into what's called a regen. It burns it all off back into the atmosphere. What they cannot burn off ends up, the filter ends up in the landfill site. So you know, other than the fact that we feel good that we don't see this black smoke coming out of the tailpipe, the reality is the current filtration systems are not improving our environment whatsoever. We look at 2023, a timely investment opportunity. You know, certainly with the oil prices, where they are today, especially the diesel prices, this is something, I mean, I, I drive a diesel truck. It's crazy. Here in Ontario, diesel fuel is 30 cents a liter more than gasoline. That was never before in history, but that's the way it is today. I mean, this is, you know, for whatever reasons, diesel prices have soared. With our technology, we reduce the consumption of diesel on an average 10 to 15%. And 
And it's important to understand when I say on an average to 10 to 15 percent, we've got this thing tested and validated globally, proven this fact. Uh, but there's a lot of companies out there who say, oh, we can improve the fuel economy up to 30 percent, things like that. The reality is our technology at times improves the fuel economy over 30 percent. It was interesting, you know, we had our uh, technology tested, validated, and certified through TÜV North and TÜV South in Europe under the guidance of EMI Tech. And uh, when they tested this, they actually drove the truck for a month first, and they were driving it through the through the hills and the mountains in the uh, Black Forest, and like that. they saw a 28% improved fuel economy. But when they actually had the truck on a dyno and did real dyno tests on it, it came in just over 13%. That was an average. When I say an average 10 to 15%, that's clear across the board. You know, this is not, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh yeah, we improved the fuel economy by 20 or 30%. Yes, we do at times. And, and there's times where we improve it by 6%, but on an average, 10 to 15%, that's very significant. More importantly, we look at the emissions. And this, again, this was tested and validated through Continental, Emitech. Uh, we worked with UOIT here in Canada, Pitt Group in Canada, uh, where it was proven to reduce the NOx up to 88%. Again, this was done right at the combustion, right at the source. The reduction in CO2, 6 to 19%. The CO, or the carbon monoxide, 47%. The hydrocarbons, 57% and the particulate matter, 55%. The lower consumption and maintenance. Again, fuel consumption, six to 19%. We say an average 10 to 15%. That's where we fall typically. Uh, the reduction in DEF fluid. The use of the DEF fluid, the diesel exhaust fluid that's used today, companies are now showing a reduction in the use of that by 51% or up to 51%. Uh, and that is because of the reduction in the NOx. I mean, the DEF fluid is designed in such a way to reduce the NOx. Now that we reduce the NOx so significantly at the combustion, it uses significantly less DEF fluid. DEF fluid is also a very expensive uh, you know, item that is used within diesel engines. The particulate matter, you know, the diesel particulate filter. These filters are a filter. You look on a transport truck, I mean, they're a massive filter. Like I said, they gather the particulate, fill, uh, the particulate matter. Then the trucks go into what's called a regen where they're, they're supposed to find a remote area to get off where it pours fuel into these filters to burn this back off, put it right back in, in the atmosphere. I don't know if you've ever seen a truck going through a regen, but you would swear this truck was on fire. It is engulfed in black smoke. This is all going right back into our atmosphere. Uh, the estimated reduction of oil changes up to 25%. It's interesting. We actually had our units tested by Detroit Diesel. They ran two trucks, one with our unit, one without our unit, all running the same routes, the same time, came back in for an oil change. The truck with our without our unit on came back at 8% soot content in the oil. And it's the soot that starts breaking down the oil and wearing out the engine. With our unit on it, it came back less than 1% soot content. Independent validations. Like I said, we spent a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort to have this thing tested, validated, and certified globally. So this is not us saying this. You know, we worked initially with the UOIT with the testing, but then with the Pitt Group in Canada, uh, Continental Emotec, ICAT in India, uh, to North and to South in Europe, where we got the homologation for our products to be marketed within the European market. And, uh, and then of course, with our Hydrolytica, which we will talk a little bit more soon. I mean, the Hydrolytica is, again, this is our technology. This is patented technology. This is like a fleet management system on steroids. What this actually does, it does everything a fleet management system does, but it also shows in real time minute by minute, day by day, the improved fuel economy and the reduction in the greenhouse gases. Then it converts it to what is called CO2E. And the reason we say CO2E, because this is the carbon, uh, 
equivalent which is required for the carbon credits. We've got a product line. We've got our first product was HG1 series. The one you see there, that was designed for class eight trucks or transport trucks. That was our first go to market. I'll tell you, if we could have ever chosen probably a tougher market to try and penetrate, it's the truck industry. When you talk to these truckers, they've been inundated forever. Put this in your fuel, put this in your oil, put this in your tire, shove this up the tailpipe. It goes on and on and on where people are trying to sell them something to improve their fuel economy. That's why we went to the extremes of having this thing tested and validated. And more importantly, we had the design of the Hydrolytica where they can see in real time. They download an app on their phone. They download a, an app on their uh, in their office where they can see the trucks, see where they are, see what's happening with them, but they can also see the improved fuel economy. This just shows you, you know, our HG1 series. These were actually designed for the 10 to 15 liter diesel engines. Again, this just shows you a truck with it on. There's a few pictures here. Uh, you see this picture on the left. These are actually trucks in Mexico, a very large grocer chain. They carry large heavy loads. So they chose to go with two HG2s as opposed to one HG1 depending on the size of, of engines and everything you get into, and depending on the loads, you can put these together. The one on the right, you can see two of our HG1s. This is actually in the oil fields, running large drilling rigs. Uh, again, this is running a large diesel engine, uh, running a generator, which runs the drilling rigs. There, because of the size of the engine, they went with the two HG1s. Again, this just shows you a picture on the left. There's a dump truck with a unit on. On the right, on a bulldozer, the one on the bulldozer actually has a four-way swivel on it. So as a dozer is going up and down and rocking everywhere, this unit is always pivoting. Again, it shows you a couple of units on trucks. I mean, here is on the left, this is a unit underneath the truck. And then, of course, on the back of a truck there. Mining industry. Now, this is an industry where we have really gained a lot of recognition. This is now, it's very interesting. Gentleman was talking to me just the other day. He was talking to Export Development Canada about something totally different. And they were talking about, you know, what they're doing with the Canadian market globally. And they said, yes, we've got this company, Dynacert, where we're working with the company H2 Tech, uh, marketing it. And they say, this is now our poster child. You can see these are real results, you know, where they're showing 13.4% on this large truck on the left, uh, you know, the Camaso on the right, 11.8. These are all actual validated test results done through Cadelco, Chinoco, and Nexa. It's important to understand this is done through H2 Tech. This is one of our dealers. This is a dealer that worked specifically in the mining industry. This is all they do. They market our product around the world within the mining industry. Again, this just shows you the smaller unit, the HG2. This was originally designed for reefers or container, uh, refrigerated containers. Uh, now it is getting used a lot within delivery trucks, you know, like the sprinter vans and the smaller delivery trucks. Again, this just shows you, you know, on the left, you see our HG4C. This is, again, in a drilling rig, running a power generator there, uh, you know, and uh, they're seeing huge benefits. We've got a lot of repeat orders. And this is the thing that probably excites me more than anything now. The orders that we are coming in continuously are repeat orders. This is customers that have tried our product, got great results. Now they are buying more units. It's interesting, just in the last few weeks, in the last month, we're getting all these orders where they've got the budget they need to use up for this year. They are adding you know, anywhere from 20 to 200 units to fill their budgets this year, and they've already budgeted to fit their fleets next year. It's amazing how our order book is growing for the next year uh, because of the repeat orders. This just shows you a picture of our 4C. Again, this was this was really suited for mining uh, for the small mid-sized uh, stationary generators. And then we've got the big 6Cs. 
Uh, you'll actually see a picture of this on a large mining truck. These are actually about the size of a small deep freeze, uh, but they are actually, you put them on a truck, it's amazing how small they look. It's interesting, we also have a mining company in Boise Bay that has four of these paired together where that are running one single large diesel generator running their operation, their mining operation there. Uh, the important thing to understand, I mean, it's what's really growing now is the importance of the emissions. It's all about the emissions. You know, we talk about the fuel savings, but really the big focus is now on the emissions, the reduction of the carbon footprint and the ESG goals that they need to meet. I mean, certainly as we move forward the next year, I mean, everybody has to report their ESG. They got to report how they are reducing their carbon footprints and they're achieving this with our technology. I talked about the mining equipment. Here's a large underground, mine, or not underground, open pit mining truck. You can see the yellow box up on the top. That is our 6C. That's an actual picture of a truck with our unit on it. We look at the current markets today. I mean, we are now on buses, everything from school buses to city buses, refrigerated trailers, small trucks, when I'm talking about delivery trucks, like the Sprinter vans, things like that, uh, the class eight trucks, power generators, farming equipment, construction equipment, mining equipment. Uh, our planned future is passengers, small marine vessels, ocean vessels, and locomotives. And I say planned, actually the locomotive, we have just penetrated the locomotive industry. We're getting great results there. There will be a lot of news coming out about that in the near future. But ocean vessels, this is something that's really near to my heart. I mean, you look at ocean vessels, especially these large container ships, we get so hung up thinking about cars and the importance of reducing the emissions in cars. And, and I'm not saying this isn't something we should be looking at, but the reality is one ocean going vessel, one container ship, the average container ship puts out the equivalent of 50 million cars per year in pollution. One container ship, 50 million cars. You know, we get uh, hung up on the cars. The reality is, these ocean gold vessels have ran under the radar screen for years. They are now starting to be scrutinized. This is something that's becoming very important. And this is something that is very large on our radar screen to get looked after. We look at the diverse, the diverse applications again. I mean, this just shows you multiple units, uh, multiple vehicles with our units, so everything from transport trucks to underground mining equipment uh, to open pit mining equipment to construction equipment, to generators. The value proposition to the end user though, this is important, this is important to understand. Now this is based purely on fuel savings. And this is an average of 10% fuel savings. Our unit on an average transport truck here in North America, their payback just on fuel savings is less than nine months. We look at the market size. I mean, the market size, you know, everybody, talks about, you know, uh, you know, diesel engines are going, the reality is diesel engines are going nowhere anytime soon, especially in, in the bigger equipment and things like that. Uh, now it's interesting, our newest distributor in France spent six months trying our product. They bought two, then they bought five, then they bought 10. They just launched, they just officially launched themselves in, at Solutran in Europe uh, where they are, selling products fast and, and uh, but it's all about the emissions there it's all about the emissions they don't even care about the fuel savings it's all about the emissions it was interesting they actually partnered with ourselves and with a race team where the dakar race uh which is happening in january in the middle east uh there is a large um, support truck they call it rally support truck decarbonization, where they have adapted our technology. They are thrilled with it. It's This is a 14 day race. They are very, very enthused about it because of the reduction in emissions. It was interesting. They actually had tests done where it reduced their emissions right off the bat, just after putting it on and running it for a few hours, north of 40%. But this also prolongs their, their runtime on fuel and, uh, the other thing, which is really, really important to us, is the is the uh, passion for the Dakar. 
certainly, you know, and the social media. I mean, they have over 200 million social networks running, 6.6 .6 million sessions on mobile apps, 10.4 million visits, and 266 million videos. And DinoSearch product will be showcased through this whole thing. This is the first time there's ever been a hydrogen injected vehicle in this Dakar race. Uh, this has been done with our distributor, IPMD, out of France, and Team Holshot. Uh, we are thrilled to be part of this. We look at our dealer network. Uh, currently, we have 40. Actually, we just signed a couple more just recently, but our dealer network is growing. And uh, so we sell through dealer networks globally. Again, I talked about the Hydrolytica and uh, the benefits of that. And I'm going to try and get through this quickly. So currently, I mean, like I said, we're not a new company. We spent 18 years in research and development, perfecting our product, getting it commercialized and ready to go to market. Uh, we have spent over $90 million getting to where this is today. We have newly upgraded assembly facilities here in Canada. Our cost of production is 50% of the wholesale price. So there's a very, very favorable profit margins in there for the company. Uh, products are sold through global networks. Uh, we also have an office and a distribution center in Europe to accommodate the dealer network in, in Europe. Comparable technologies. This is something to understand. And I was at Kentucky Truck Show. This is, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. Maybe it's 10 years ago now when they first, first launched this. It's interesting. At that time, Everybody, I walked around and everybody in the show said, there is no way we will ever put these things on our truck. Today, you're hard pressed to find a truck anywhere without them. Average cost of these are $3,000 per truck to improve the fuel economy in an average of 1%. You look at our unit at a cost of $10,000, uh, you know, at 10% fuel savings, that's, base, that's base, basically a cost of one thousand dollars per one percent as opposed to three thousand dollars per one percent on that the important thing that i see is the tipping point i believe that dinosaur is now just at the cusp of that tipping point we've got large companies that are starting to adopt our technology as that happens everybody starts to jump on board Thera carbon credits we have spent over two years working through this this is something that is very important to us. Uh, we have our carbon credits. We just recently announced, just in the last week, announced that the audit firm that was chosen by Vera to audit our technology, which they took over a year doing, validated and uh, certified our technology. They've just submitted this 58 page to Vera to give us the final blessing of the final certification of the carbon credits. We fully expect that in the early new year, in the first quarter of new year, we will be launching our carbon credit program. Uh, this is something that we've been waiting for a very long time. Uh, large companies have been waiting for it for a very long time. You know, the carbon credits is designed in such a way that we will maintain 50% of the carbon credits. The end user qualifies for 50% of the carbon credits by paying a small subscription agreement for our Hydrolytica. Uh, the value on this is significant, uh, you know, and it was interesting, both Vera and Earthhood, the auditors said, Jen, your carbon credits, Dinosaurs carbon credits will be deemed a premium carbon credit because it is 100% data-driven. There is no human intervention with this whatsoever. With our Hydrolytica and everything, it is all taken right from the computer of the truck. Uh, this is hard data that uh, can't be can't be changed, can't be played with. We have a very strong shareholder network. We've got over 6,000 retail shareholders. 13% of our stock is held by family offices. Eric Sprott holds just over 8% of our tech, uh, of our of our shares. Institutions 5%, management and insiders 31%. Uh, very high barriers to entry, like I said, worldwide patents. We now have 27 patents. It was very interesting. Not long ago, I had an independent uh, gentleman from a broker, an analyst said, Jim, 
your one patent. We have the worldwide patent on the means and methods of monitoring and monetizing carbon credits. This is within internal combustion engines. It's actually within 12 different verticals. He said that single patent, once you've got your certification of carbon credits, is a trillion dollar patent. That's not me saying this, this is an individual saying this, but the reality is that patent is worth its weight in gold to us as a company, to the future of this company, and to our end users. Last but not least, I know that uh, Cypher Neutron already did a presentation. Cypher Neutron is a company that we have partnered with. This is a company that is, uh, you know, I've always been a strong believer in the future of hydrogen, the hydrogen economy. Uh, Cypher Neutron is the, has the largest AEM technology now in the world. There is one other company in Europe that has AEM technology. Uh, this is something for high pressure, high volume, pure green hydrogen. This is something we're very excited about, something that we're very involved in. We have partnered with this company. We've invested in this company. Uh, we've invested millions of dollars. We've also got the options to buy up to 50% of this company, and we're very excited about it. Uh, Julian, I'm going to leave it there because I know that I'm just about out of time, and I'm going to give an opportunity for a few questions. Uh, we still have uh, a minute or two. There is obviously a lot of question like usual. I will start uh, with the first one. Volker is asking, any 40-ton truck sales in Germany or Europe? Uh, yes, we have several several trucks being sold in Europe, uh, or several units being sold in Austria, in Germany, uh, in France. Things are really heating up. That's where we've got a lot of sales happening. Okay, um, Derek is asking a question a little more difficult. Why are your units not being adopted more broadly in the Canadian trucking industry? Uh, like I said, that's probably the toughest market we've tried to penetrate, but the reality is we are now getting that acceptance. Uh, we have now started getting repeat sales. Uh, you know, we have a significant amount of sales going out the last quarter of this year. Uh, and we've got a huge sales book already building for next year. So it is now starting to happen. Let me just quickly say, I mean, the one thing that I'm very excited about, you know, we are moving into the year end and moving into the new year. Uh, I personally don't believe we could be at a better place at a better time with our technology. The acceptance that is now getting out there, the knowledge and the brand awareness, you know, with a proven product, the interesting thing is we'll be moving into the new year as a debt-free company with proven products, a very strong sales book. Uh, and uh, we are looking to certainly increase and strengthen our management and our board in the new year also. All right. Well, this is all the time we had. I'm sorry, everyone, if we couldn't ask all of the questions, but sadly, uh, this is how it works. Everyone just gets half an hour. Um, so, OK. So in that case, Jim, I thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you for the update. We're looking forward to see uh, the big sales coming in, the financials and uh, big news of Vera uh, adoption. Well, confirmation for the um, carbon credit. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you, Julian.